What's up guys? Welcome back. You guessed it. It's Funny Story Friday. Now two things before we get started. First off, thank you, thank you. Just the amount of love and support and encouragement that I've gotten from all of you guys on this first vlog has really meant a lot to me. It really blew away my expectations and so thank you very much. Second of all, people who vlog for a living, I have so much respect for them because this is so much harder than I thought. Seriously, the amount of planning and preparation and uh, the amount of takes that I have to do, uh, guys, I've been sitting at this very spot for like 15 minutes already and we're barely into this. It takes a lot. And so I have a lot of respect for people who do it well. I wanna be one of those people. But in the meantime, it's challenging. I digress. It's Funny Story Friday. It was a beautiful Tuesday afternoon in sunny South Florida, and I get a phone call from a lady named Melissa. Now, Melissa was needing a drummer for a music festival that she was putting on. I was like, cool, I play the drums, you need a drummer, we can work something out, right? But as we go through the conversation, I, I noticed her, her pretty strong Jamaican accent, and I was like, okay, so what, what kind of music is this? And she's like, well, it's, it's Jamaican gospel music. And I was like, cool, like, yeah. <laughs> never played anything even remotely like that. But I was confident in my abilities, so I was like, sure, let's give this a shot. So, a few days later, I roll up to the address that they gave me, and it's not quite what I had expected. Now, before I go any further, these people were so kind and so hospitable and did nothing in any way to like put me in a bad spot or anything like that. I just didn't know what I was getting into fully. So I knock on the door, and the lady opens this door like this much. Are you Joel? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's me. And she's like, okay, go around the back. And I was like, all right, like, that sounds good. Like, let's do it. Um, so I walk around the back and there's this like little screened in back porch, like really pretty outdoor area, but not the kind of thing that I was expecting for band practice. And there's like remnants of a drum kit and nothing else. And so I like kind of come into the back porch a little bit and then four generations of Jamaican women come just filing out of this house. There's just more of them. It's like Mary Poppins purse. They just keep coming. They're all carrying like microphones and keyboards and music stands and all kinds of stuff. And I was like, yes, perfect. Like, <laughs> where am I? I'm in another city with no one that I know. All right, let's just roll with this. You know, and then, so Melissa introduced herself to me and introduced me to the rest of the family. So we started getting to know each other. So as we're playing, I, I can't do these glasses anymore. So as we're playing, we're just like grooving and jiving. We're having a good time. I'm loving it. I think I'm doing great. And they like stop me like, <laughs> like halfway through like the third song. And they're like, um, can you play with a little bit more soul? <laughs> I guess I thought I was more Jamaican than I actually am. Who'd have thunk? Anyways, so I was like, yeah, like, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'll try and play with some more soul. And so, like, I can tell, like, in this band that I'm definitely the weakest link. You ever been that person where you're like, man, if I could really get my crap together, I think this could be really great. <laughs> And so weeks go by, we're like practicing here and there. I'm getting a little bit better. I'm listening to a lot of reggae music. God bless, my roommates were so patient with me. But I'm getting better and the show is approaching. So finally the day comes and I'm hanging out with my buddy Corbin. Now Corbin was a new friend of mine at the time. Didn't know each other that well, but I knew that he was a musician and I was like, hey, I'm about to go play to Jamaican music festival. Do you want to come hang? And he was like, Yes, of course. <laughs> so we hop in the car and drive like an hour south. Now again, we don't know where we are. We don't know who these people are. We are just going into this blind. So Corbin and I walk in. It's this elaborate spread. It's like beautiful white tablecloth and fine china. They were definitely roasting that turkey for like three days. This is a sweet event, but it's not huge. It's probably 150 or 200 people. So we're like, man, that, this, this looks great. Looks like it's gonna be a good time. So as the event gets started, there's like a lot of cultural stuff happening, like some phrases and traditional stuff. We just can't understand what they're saying. And so we're just trying to blend in. We're just trying to like be part of the crowd, but then comes time for the music and I have to emerge from my 
cozy little corner in the back. I like get up on the stage and I click off the first song and then I look up and immediately everyone is standing and they are just dancing. Like no hesitation, no warm up, no warning whatsoever. They are just cutting the rug. You know, usually at a concert or a church service or anything like that, it usually takes like a song or two to kind of get people like warmed up a little bit. Then about like the third or fourth song, they're really getting into it. Dude, these Jamaican folks had no problem whatsoever. They were just so themselves the entire time. But somehow in the midst of this, I can just see straight to the back where Corbin is just losing his mind laughing at me because I'm the one not so soulful white guy in this really wonderfully ethnic band. <laughs> but not just the band, but a whole room full of just wonderfully diverse community. So we make it through the music, did all right. I still felt like the weak link. I only dropped a drumstick like twice. I don't, I don't even know. But we make it through and I kind of like slink off stage, just trying to like blend in and get back to my corner. <laughs> right as I'm sitting down, this guy like comes up on stage and he's got this little sheet of paper and he says, yeah, I'd like to make an announcement. Um, we just would like to thank Joel Henson because none of this would have been possible without him. <laughs> Oh my gosh, like no way, what? Like, I'm so grateful that they wanted to thank me, but in that moment, I was just so embarrassed. I already felt like I was sticking out so bad, and in that moment, I just wanted to vanish. And of course, Corbin is sitting next to me, just dying laughing, thinks this is the best thing ever. So for the rest of the night, people were coming up to me like, oh man, thank you so much for all your hard work on this. I mean, I put in some hours, but I feel like a lot of people did a lot more than me. I was just some drummer. All that to say, it was a pretty great experience. It was just so embarrassing for me being the weak link in the band and then have everyone thank me for all the hard work I put in on this. So all that being said, Melissa, thank you for a great event. I promise you and everyone else had to have worked a lot harder than me. I just hauled a drum kit. I just had to share this because have you ever just looked around somewhere and been like, where am, how did I get here? <laughs>